All right, so I bumped into this video, and the title of the thumbnail said, has microtransactions ruined gaming? Wait, hold on, let me make sure. How microtransactions changed gaming. So I'm interested in seeing what their side, excuse me, what their side is on it of how microtransactions changed gaming. Me, well, wait, what is their, why the 183 billion video game industry, $183 billion video game industry can't quit? Before we, I just, I'm just curious to see what their thoughts on, on the whole microtransaction thing. Um, but I will say this, someone asked me, well, someone didn't ask me, they just told me that microtransactions ruin gaming uh, for him, uh, just in general, for us who play video games, who grew up with video games, and it's ruining it for the new generation. I, I, I'm mixed on that. I'm mixed on that. I don't believe microtransactions ruin gaming. I do believe it has ruined some companies in a way where they're not focusing on the product. They're focusing on the money and then the product will come last. I mean, we've seen it the last five or 10 years, how not 10 years, that's, well, maybe 10 years. You can correct me in the comments, but we've seen it for a while, how games are starting to always come out half done. It is like repetitively, and then they come. The industries have these lame, ex like apologies, excuses. Some of them you read, and it's like this was AI generated. Then you realize it was because the spellings are wrong. Anyway, point is, you see how a lot of these games, a lot of them, are come out half done, but the store is on fleek. The store is on fire. The store is perfect, and all that stuff. And it shows you where their priorities are. And then you also see how. Even for free-to-play games, a lot of the stuff that you pay for are crazy expensive. Some of them have a gambling feel to it, um, like with the Ultimate Team. Yes, it's not technically gambling, like like you're going to a casino, but it has, as a person, who, I grew up in Atlantic City. I grew up with casinos around, as my neighborhood. This, the Ultimate Team way of playing with the you know, mystery boxes. I call it mystery box because you don't really know what you're going to get with those packs in these sports games. Uh, it has a lot, it's, it's, it's a gambling feel to it, but there's been more focus on that than the product. Me personally, I don't have an issue with, oh, and one more thing. And then uh, we get more focus, less on the product and more on cr crazy prices for a lot of this stuff. And uh, some of these uh, companies have excuses of, well, the game is free to play, so the skin should be worth $40. No, 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 no. And the way I look at the way I look at that is companies are treating their fan bases like they're dumb. And I don't like that. Don't treat the people who put money in your pocket dumb. Don't treat them like they're dumb. And what I mean by that is, yes, your game is free to play. But when I buy one skin, it's almost the cost of a full game. And let's let's be real here. A lot of these free to play games, not everyone, but a lot of these free to game uh, free to play games are costing you more than the actual game itself and granted you can be like well you don't have to buy it but come on and for those who was in the 360 era ps3 era remember where stuff was like two dollars and five dollars here and there or you'll buy the season pass and you'll get everything and not just the maps but you'll get the skins and all that now it's like one skin is twenty dollars and come on like you got to understand that fans want to enjoy new things they want a new skin it is nothing wrong with pricing it, but when you do it as an insult where you're charging forty dollars, hundred dollars, or you know, it can be insulting to the fan base. So I think that's where it also has a microtransaction has uh, ruined in in relation to what someone was talking to me about. It ruined the trust of the fans. Do you know? Do I trust you to give me great product for me to want to invest in the game? Because me personally, I don't have an issue with microtransactions as long as it's done right. If you do the game right, I'm gonna do you right by adding a little more more money. I'm not gonna add no $40. You can forget that for one little skin. No, 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 no. Five, at the most, 10. And 10 comes with the skins and uh, some other stuff. You know, it. just respect your fans. That's where I believe, I'm, I'm gonna cut it short right there because I wanna get to the video. That's where I believe uh, my, uh, microtransactions have changed in the game, in some of these gaming industries. And it's funny, they're showing EA there. And I love EA. I like the game. I'm looking forward to their college uh, uh, football game. Uh, I haven't played football in a minute. But I have to admit, as a person who plays a lot of FIFA, I play FIFA behind the scenes. Every now and then I post them on my channel, but I play FIFA behind the scenes. It is annoying 
of the fact that I'm spending this money and I'm not getting the players I want. I got to keep. Oh, OK. Sorry, that, that startled me for a minute. But I got to keep spending money. Like I said, it's like a gambling thing and hope to get something. I don't like that. You know, if there was something I could change in this game and stuff is that you still can get your money. Just do it where we're getting a good return. I don't like this surprise mechanics. And you know where I got that from. I don't like that philosophy. I didn't spend my money for surprise mechanics. That's what you go to casinos for. Anyway, we're going to get into it. I can make a whole video talking about that. But we're gonna, I'm curious to see what they say. How microtransactions change gaming. The two biggest video game makers in America now make most of their money not from people buying games, but on subscriptions and spending within those games. In fact, Electronic Arts and TikTok. Sorry, I have to mention this. One thing that it also ruined is a lot of great single player games that, uh, a lot of games that could be great single player games because the focus is on how to make more money all on the side. That's one thing microtransactions have ruined. Like Rocksteady, for example, with Suicide Squad, they did so well with the Arkham series. Single player, you still had some micro uh, some stuff with skins, but it wasn't like crazy, and that wasn't their main focus. But now that you're trying to focus on the live service and the microtransactions, it deviated you from making a good product with the main story with the with the single player. And that's one thing I do. Now, granted, there are still great single player games, but there used to be a lot more than the better variety and now with these microtransaction error this i call it the error it has deviated from that because their focus is more on how to get this and we'll focus on the product later we'll focus on the product later we'll send an apology of why the game is half done that that's not a good thing money not from people buying games but on subscriptions and spending within those games. In fact, Electronic Arts and Take-Two Interactive both make a staggering 75% of their money from what's called microtransactions. You've seen examples of this revenue generation from top titles like GTA 5, NBA 2K, and Fortnite. Uh, they come in the 2K. form of battle passes, membership programs, and virtual currencies. This is all happening despite intense backlash from consumers and critics, and as the cost of developing these games reach staggering levels. I just find the trend so tacky and wearisome from toe to tip, but it ain't going anywhere because it sells. In fact, it has been selling. The yeah. revenue model conversation has generated that's so much thing. attention. That's another thing. That's why I don't give the companies, as much as I don't like their uh, direction with companies, I never really go at the companies themselves like 2K is garbage, EA is garbage. I don't do that. I just thought if I'm if something's really frustrating me, like the the money situation with 2K is one of the reasons I just stopped playing it for for a while. Uh, but I just stopped playing the game. I don't go at the company. But the reason I, one of the reasons I don't is because if the consumer wouldn't buy it, it wouldn't be successful. You can't be mad at them too much i should say when the people who are giving them all this money is doing it they're the ones who are igniting it because the company can only say here you go here's a remote twenty dollars for a remote twenty dollars two hundred dollars and we'll put a sticker on it you have to buy it and that's the problem it's not much of the company it's these gamers that do it that's why I do, and I'm guilty as charged of it too. I used to do it a lot. Do I still do microtransactions now? Yes, I just do it more. I do it in a wiser way. I'm not going to be insulted, and uh, that's a whole other story. But yes, I do it nowhere near as I thought. I used to be addicted to it. Another conversation for another day. But it was people like us who initiated this stuff. They just they just put it in front street. Here you go. It was you. It was me. It was us that was like, oh, I'll do that. Hundred dollars for one little thing, you know. So that's why I don't really go at the company much. It's more of the the if the fan base didn't do it, we wouldn't have this problem. You know, they'll find a different way to make more money. So that's one other reason. Like people wonder why I don't go at companies a lot. That's why when it comes to microtransactions, parties are now trading high stakes lawsuits over the issue. Epic yeah. Games Fortnite created its own in game payment system for microtransactions, and that caused Apple to remove the mobile app from the App Store, ending in a lawsuit I heard about with several that. court proceedings. Apple now has to give its users access to rival payment systems and app stores in the European Union. There was quite a bit of pushback from especially the, the very dedicated gaming community and and rightly so in a lot of cases. You know, a lot of those models, the early models, it was tough to get the things you want. 
So here's how microtransactions and live services took over the video game industry, and why gamers really can't do anything to stop it. And this is a big story, so definitely let me know in the comment section your feel of it. Inside a video game that costs real money. In Take 2's NBA 2K, you can purchase virtual currencies for various prices. Buying the Battle Pass in Fortnite each season, or approximately every three to six months, grants you new skins as well as the ability to purchase its own virtual currency, V-Bucks. The highest selling console game of all time, GTA 5, allows gamers of GTA Online to purchase a GTA Plus membership for $5.99 a month. Prior to say, there's a monthly, um, so I said this before when the GTA 6 trailer came out, I've never played really of GTA games. So I don't know a lot of this stuff about the monthly subscription or any other stuff of GTA. I am going to get into it when a new one comes out. Uh, I've heard about keep saying I'm missing out. I probably am. But, uh, yeah, GTA was something I never knew about. I see trailers of it. There was Dr. Dre in the trailer before. I thought that was cool. Uh, but, yeah, that was something I never did. But I didn't know they had a monthly membership well, to play their game. You're looking at 98% or more of content spending being done physically. That all began to change when people started to get more connected. And that allowed publishers to do new and different things beyond just selling a disc, including, you know, not just digital downloads, uh, but also things like subscription services. In 1971, the video game market was only the computer space arcade game and took in $1 billion in revenue. Fast forward to today, and the market's worth $183 billion with various platforms and thousands of games. Mobile gaming has played a massive part in the expansion of the industry. What's driven the growth of the gaming market has been the, the growth of smartphones. Now in 2023, you've got 80% of the world's population using a smartphone. So, you know, we just have, you know, 6 billion plus people with a device. Um, All right, why are there so many of these playing, mobile games you know, are coming out? Some kind of game on it. So we're just able to reach so I can never get into mobile. It's just not my thing. With games today than back in and I'm not a phone person, so maybe that's why I, I don't care for I, I, games I, the cash I'm all right with phone. And now the industry leaders want to bring more and more of that model to console and PC gaming. Live services refers to game publishers' work to continuously provide new content throughout the game's life cycle, which popular titles like Fortnite, Apex Legends, and League of Legends have. 80-year-old white men who are worth billions are probably not playing mobile games, but their grandkids are. Mm -hmm. And when their yeah. grandkids are, are, you know, billionaires, they'll still be playing mobile games. And certain executives are banking on it. Take-Two Interactive President and CEO Carl Slatoff and Strauss Zelnick were paid in total $72 million in 2022 after revising their compensation packages to include for bonuses. That's the people buying the stuff. I can't get, you can't, I, like personally, and I cannot get mad at the companies doing that. I do look at them with an eyebrow raise on some of the things, but like for example, Mortal Kombat, the one, the game had its, it had a lot of issues. Oh, you know what? It's not just Mortal Kombat. Well, you know what? One of the thing that really bugs me, and you see it a lot, is when the game has a lot of issues going on, and even the store is messed up. What's the first thing that gets fixed? The store. The store. The game will be messing up, but the store is fixed. And I remember more. I mentioned Mortal Kombat one because that's what happened recently. Not well, not I'm saying that, not recently. In the beginning stages of when the game was released, and people was pointing out, they was like, "Dang, the internet, the the connections are still messing up. This is messing up. Uh, Invasion is messing up." But they got that store fixed. That's my biggest issue. Is you know, make sure the people that are buying your stuff can enjoy their product. That's my only issue. And just make sure you're reasonable too. Like that, I can't stand high price stuff for so small, for so little. One skin, knowing good and well you're about to release a new skin tomorrow. $20 for one skin. And it makes, you know, I remember a friend was like, well, they're not going to come out with a skin anytime soon. They ain't going to come out one tomorrow. Lo and behold, it wasn't the next day, but it was a couple days later. It was like, no, don't do that. That's why I say it's insult to the fan base. But people are buying this stuff. So personally, and I encourage you do what you want. I mean, I, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I will encourage to look more at the people buying it than the company themselves. Because to be real, if you are if you're a company that's looking to make money and people are doing something, you know, they are actually accepting what you are offering them. Is it understand? Is it not understandable why they keep doing their these same practices and sometimes going above and beyond that? Is it right? Is it morally right? No, 
but everybody ain't gonna move morally right. And to be real, everybody has their own viewpoint of what is morally right. I'm not. I'm just. I'm being a realist. Doesn't mean I like that. What I just said. That you know. It does. I, I don't. But I've accepted that. That just because I think it's morally wrong on some occasions, like how you disrespect your fan base in some of these microtransactions, doesn't mean they look at it that way. It doesn't mean that. It, I mean, let's be real. It could be frustrating to hear that, but it's true. Uh, it's it's wrong how they're doing the fan base. They think you're wrong. They think you're wrong. They was like, no, they out there buying it. So obviously, there's nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? And they look at it from what the fans are doing. The fan, the people are pulling out. And this is a person that was guilty of doing that too a lot. Like that's how I said. I used to do it as in I did it in access. I was the one who I was one of those people who gave companies the green light that oh it's fine. I'm gonna spin it again. I'm gonna spin it again. I ain't gonna. I'm not lying to. You. I had an addiction. I was paying. Psh- more than my pay, like more than my pay grade. This is a while ago, eight some seven eight years ago, where I was doing more than what I'm actually earning. I was spending more of that on Ultimate Team and stuff. And I'm not against Ultimate Team now. I just like I said, I go wiser. I realize I, I could go other ways of doing. I could do you know. I rather play and grind the game for hours and then spend a little dollars here than spending more than my livelihood for it, or even anything close to my livelihood for it. But we just got to be honest with ourselves. It's not, yes, the company doesn't have to do that, but who are who are you to tell the company what and what not to do? The best way to not to show them is to not do it and to have other encourage other people not to do it. But you can't tell people what to do. And these companies are like, you can complain all you want. Obviously, the majority is paying for my mansions, <laughs> is paying for my uh, uh, yachts and all that other stuff. So you're wrong, not me. So that's how that's how I look at it. I made peace with that a long time. Like, well, personally, I've never really been at the company's heart like that because I've always seen it that way. It's just now you see a lot of people complaining about it and going at the company. And as I do agree to some extent, the company should get some backlash due to how they're disrespecting their fan bases. Some of them with some of this stuff. It's more of the players than anything. Let's keep going. Transaction trend isn't going anywhere. As Electronic Arts brought in $5.6 billion in its latest earning results, highlighting the resilience of this evergreen business model. It's showing. Incorporating um, spend opportunities and paid games offends the user because they're like, I already paid 70 bucks for the game. Why do you want to charge me more? This frustration and backlash to in-game purchases is nothing new. It brought controversy in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion with the infamous horse armor for $2 back in 2006. And it still is today. Wow. Traditional gamers That's what, they don't, say, they're not, they know, don't care. I want to buy what a you great said? game. You know, backlash. Game, like, yeah. The best like backlash is money. Nickel on dimes, you know, along the way. After negative feedback before Electronic Arts' release of Star Wars Battlefront II I in remember 2017, that. I was there the company for that. decided against its own iteration of in-game purchases, which many labeled as pay-to-win. Gamers who buy games. Yeah, I will say that. I'm never in agreement with that. And I've, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't seen many games that have a pay to win system. It's more skins and emotes and stuff like that. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But um, before though, when it used to be, you know, if you get this, you actually are a step ahead of your opponent. I hated that. Like I said, it's been a while, but yeah, I would never agree to that. The pay to win system. You're better than me or I'm better than you because I paid for some or you paid for something like that's no It should be you know, if you're playing a comp- especially when you're playing competitive games. It's like come on now Come on now. I can't I, I can't win because I paid thirty dollars or whatever for this whatever this thing is Yeah, I, I would never agree to that I have this code Which is kind of not very well thought through but it, it, that they hate pay to win the Battlefront 2 release was also marred by loot boxes, which are packages of content gamers can buy to enhance their experience via costumes or playable characters. Loot boxes weren't just an issue for gamers. Hawaii's legislature wrote a bill to ban them from video games in the state. Whole countries have altogether banned loot boxes. They believe the loot box is too many ties to gambling. It's the chance yeah, factor. that's what I said. So they have to very clearly state the odds of getting something good, which is generally between one and 2%. You know, so in other words, something costs a dollar, but you have a 1% chance of getting it, you'll spend a hundred dollars to get it. You know, that mm, you gotta do a hundred. That's how it works. You might get lucky and spend twenty and get, get lucky, but you gotta spend. There are recent games. You know, that have and I'm not gonna thing. say the person's name, 
because I don't want to put the YouTuber out there, but it was a YouTuber who, uh, and he was fire He was like, oh my goodness, I spent that much money, but it was 2K. It was during the time I was playing 2K. It was a while ago. This was when LaMelo Ball was right before he was about to get into the NBA. The reason I know this is because he had a card that came out from 2K, an ultimate team. And, of course, it was him and some other player. I can't remember who the other ones were. But he wanted in this video to get LaMelo Ball. And he just kept opening packs, opening packs. And he he was showing how much he was spending, opening packs. He spent $680 and finally got LaMelo Ball. That is where I'm saying the disrespect. That, and you can't tell me that's not gambling. You know, that is, I said this before and I'll say it again. With Ultimate Team and stuff like that, you should have the same way like Fortnite, for example. You want this skin, pay $10. If you want, I play FIFA, for example. Ronaldo, you pay $10. I should not have to keep paying another 10 and another 10 and another 10 to hopefully get Ronaldo. He's six hundred and eighty dollars for one card that could or could not be good. I don't care if the card was perfect. Six hundred and eighty dollars for one card is ridiculous. But the fact of and he was he was like, you know what? I'm showcasing this, and he did. He showcased. He's like, bro, I should not have to do all that to get one card. Really, you know. And for those no ultimate team, you know, especially like with two K, they have a habit of giving you the same card every pack, and it's like all these players in the roster. You keep giving me the same one. But it's, I'm from the, the casino uh, city, one of them, not Vegas, but I'm from Lang City. We're one of the, we're a casino city. That is the exact same way you'll go to a casino and play in hope, maybe this time, maybe this time. Nope. And you just spend, spend, you know, that's, in video games, I don't believe that should be. Game purchases, mainly console games with a focus on playing a specific role, like IGN's 2023 Game of the Year winner, Baldur's Gate, and PlayStation's blockbuster Spider-Man series. Several of IGN's Game of the Year winners do not have aspects of in-game purchasing yeah. outside of downloadable content available for users to buy. However, when you take a single-player game and make it into a multiplayer game, people will spend. Yeah, like Baldur's Gate, stuff like that, yeah, that... that and it, it, they made a lot of money. They still show you can still make money. Their fan base is happy. That's why I said you focus on making the fans happy, they'll make you happy. You know, it works both ways. You know, but that, that's, that's just me. But like I said, these companies don't have to listen because there's a lot of other people who are paying for their mansions and yachts. And next, Aston Martin, that they're like, uh, your point is not valid because I just bought a new supercar. <laughs> it's just it's just real like that the backlash towards in-game purchases isn't isolated to just gamers on reddit in the uk parliament published a response to a call for evidence in july 2022 detailing exactly how game companies can protect children and adults those rules include things like loot boxes should be unavailable to children unless they're enabled by a I agree with or that. guardian and all players should be aware of spending controls to support safe and responsible gambling the game industry's response created the UK Interactive Entertainment. But the parents got to watch the kids too, so the kids ain't using their parents' the government's account. Response. Showing what the odds are to get the items that you really want, you know, are, is a really good one. So we still see those mechanics being used quite a bit across the video game industry, and there's just a lot more transparency around it. And of course, you know, very specific markets have outlawed um, very specific forms of. I always uh, said this, and I agree. This was a YouTuber. Um, Angry Joe, he said something. He said the ultimate team uh, section should be mature because that's for an adult to decide. I agree. I agree. See, when I heard that, I was like, that's a good point because kids should not be. I've heard stories of kids uh, taking their mom's credit card and spending thousands of dollars without the mom knowing. Like ultimate team, anything that's like that when it comes to the microtransactions should be mature rated. And just say for gambling... Yeah, I should just keep it simple. Microtransaction, gamble, whatever you want to call it. Because, yeah, this, that should not be a decision for kids to make. And parents got to watch their kids because these companies can be like, well, it's not our fault the parents ain't watching their kids, which you got a point. But at the same time, parents are thinking video games are this. Some parents don't pay attention to video games. They think it's just something you play, have fun, and move on. Not something you're spending more money for after they pay $70 for it. You know, but I, I agree with that philosophy. I think when you get 2Ks, E... For everyone, then it's like on a, da a dash, mature for ultimate team. Or in their case, what's they call my team? 
So, but I do also appreciate that these companies like FIFA and other, I think, I don't know if other companies do. I think Madden does, but I know FIFA does from playing it. They'll tell you their, the odds, which is kind of reason, the reason why I don't really <laughs> buy packs much. I, I, very, I can't remember the last time I did. I just grind and play other, you know, be grateful for the players I got and just keep playing. And it works. I mean, I got a good team. But I don't have the best team as you can pay for. But I, I have a good team. I can compete. But, um, yeah, it actually does help. I will give the companies credit for that. The ones that be like, okay, the odds are 4%. I'm not putting my money on no, <laughs> on no 4%. That's, that's, that's not happening. Unless I just got some extra money. I'm just like, you know what? Let me put a little extra $10 here. I'm not doing it. 4%? No. No, no, no. But I do appreciate the companies doing that. The loot boxes. So I think the regulations are actually in a pretty good place right now. Several countries have passed laws with varying degrees of regulation. For example, Italy, South Korea, and the Netherlands require probability disclosures while an outright ban against loot boxes exists in Belgium. As a result, gaming companies have modified their transaction model over time. The industry has really moved to more of a what they call a battle pass system or, or some kind of packaging of seasonal content. And that's found a lot more uh, in terms of a warm response than the, the early days of the loot box. Battle passes are a monetization approach that give gamers the chance to earn skins they normally wouldn't be able to unlock, but can via real world payments. Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone excel here. However, these live service games with battle passes require ongoing maintenance which requires labor and is not cheap to produce. At least one major game publisher told UK regulators in 2023 that a single game and a major franchise cost them more than $1 billion to release, including development and marketing expenses. Microtransactions and subscriptions are a way for video game companies to recoup those staggering developers. This is costs. something where I am on the company side and I've I've gotten a little backlash for saying this, but I was the person who was buying microtransactions crazy too. But I said this. Microtransaction, I believe, is like uh or downloadable content, microtransaction, whatever you want to call it, is okay because it does cost money to make these games. That's why I said to an extent it's fine. But when you go over a line, it's like okay, now you're just being greedy. But I do have a lot of these, a lot of these companies. Not everyone, because some, I'm not gonna say the names. But some of these companies are just, you know, they're. I don't. How should I say it? They're really taking advantage of their fan base. I'm gonna keep the names out of it. But I do agree to some extent that microtransaction is good for the lifespan of the company. Is good. Is it? But I, I, you know, I'll just keep it right there. It's good. To an extent, and I already explained the extent. I don't want to talk another five minutes about what the extent is, but to an extent, it is good. And in some cases, well, I wouldn't say necessary, but if you're looking to make a little extra money, you know, five dollar skin here, ten dollar bundle, not forty dollar bundle. You know, like that was one thing that bothered me with the uh, like I play like when I played Overwatch, I like did I, I like was really into Diablo Four at the time. And there was a Diablo Mora skin where you're Lilith. And I really wanted it. I was waiting for it, counting down the day when it was about to be released. And it was behind a $40 paywall. And that's the only way you can get it. I, that's, that's where I'm talking about. And it's like you're using the fan bases, your fan base. And you're taking advantage, you're taking advantage of your fan base, in my opinion. Because you know there's people that wanted that. And you know they just want that skin. But no, we're going to put $40 price tag. But we're giving you this other stuff, other stuff that nobody, that people, a lot of people didn't want. You know, and you think because you put it in there, it's valid for the $40. And to this day, it is not a single price on it. That's where I have a problem. That's called, I, I call that part of taking advantage of your fan base. Like that, don't do that. You know people are excited and you're using that excitement to be greedy. I think, in my opinion, that... I. I like Overwatch, but that moment was greed. In that moment. And I'm just being real. That's where I, you know, that's part of drawing the line. Shouldn't have to pay $40 for one skin. That is, no. Some of the biggest challenges now, I think, is the, the, the cost of development is increasing. So if you're making you know, a large world, a large open world, and you fill that with very detailed characters, and you want to have the best performance capture in there, uh, that takes you know, a lot of skilled workers or if you're developing a game, a live game, and you want to update that every day or every week, that again takes a lot of skilled workers. 
Games like Fortnite and EA's Ultimate Team require maintenance throughout work the and course money. of That's one playing thing I agree on. live services, which are frequent content updates throughout the game's life cycle. EA's live services brought in a record $1.71 billion in a quarter ending January 30th, but they're costly to manage, and not all studios are able to bring the live service offerings they had initially planned, like PlayStation, but have still found success with certain games, like That game is Helldivers fun, by 2. the way. Really Never posted on my channel, but I'm enjoying that with my friends. Service, a living, game that continues for years and years. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 launched in 2013. That's crazy it's still how long it's been. I did not know. Somebody told me that. I was like, dang, it's later. been that long. And it was like, yeah. You know, Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to come out and be the biggest entertainment launch in history. The next development to shift the financial footing in gaming is likely to be the shift from owning a copy of the game to being able to use the game through cloud services. Eventually, someday, we make it to the point where cloud-enabled devices will provide a good enough experience where people are willing to transition over to cloud-based gaming nope. on a more full-time basis. So when that happens, we nope. don't have nope. the no, nope. no, nope. need nope. of a device. I refuse. I refuse. I am physical all the way. Do I have cloud gaming stuff? Sure, because I have Xbox Game Pass. But the fact of the matter is, like, who was it? I think it was the person from Ubisoft that was like, get used to the fact that of not owning your stuff are you kidding when you cloud game you are you don't own your stuff even though you pay full price for it you don't the moment they're ready to, they're ready to shut down a certain uh system or whatever you want to call it you don't have the game no more there's actually people who bought movies and they've complained online that they don't have the movie no more and i'm supposed to accept that i will never accept that i am physical media all the way and because of this push I don't even buy downloadable games anymore unless it's downloadable only. Well, no, I take that back. No, I don't. No, I do not. Because I no, I, I believe in walking how you talk. If you're going to if I'm going to say that, then I got to do it. If there's some games that I miss because it's going to be downloadable only. Oh, well. Oh, well, unless I am happy with the fact that I paid for. And this is more on the full price stuff. If I'm happy to pay full price, $70. To not own it? No. Now, if I paid $10, okay, that was like for rent. For $20, I rented it for however many, you know, a couple of months, a couple, a couple of years or whatever. But if I'm paying $70, this is for the games I'm paying 70 full price on, I better own it. Movies as well. I did not pay $5 for the movie. I paid $20, $30. I want to own it. I want my physical media. Hold on a second. You know, I gotta, I gotta hold on to it. Movies, games, you know, I buy my, I'm physical meat all the way. I would not transition to digital only. I refuse. And hopefully, I, this is personally, I believe it's going to come back. As much as these companies try to push it away, I believe it's going to, the fans, this is something the fans is going to push back on one, you know, in one day. Like how Best Buy got rid of physical movies. That's why I don't really go there no more. That's really the only reason I went to Best Buy. I liked how they're they're like their their, their versions of deep Blu-rays with the metal cases and all that. You know, now I'm like, what do I need to go there for? There's other stores that have what they got. You know, and shout out to Amazon. They still sell physical copy stuff. And personally, <laughs> I said it to a, a friend of mine. I was like, I think Amazon's watching from the back end, meaning they're watching these stores that are getting rid of what fans want, and they're like, man. We can just keep it, and we're going to make a lot of money. And they should keep it. They should keep physical media. I will buy, and I will keep buying from Amazon if I have to. But, no, I, I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. There's nothing wrong with cloud gaming. But when you tell me to, rem to remove my physical media, for uh-uh, nope. If I'm paying for something, I better own it. And the dude talking about, or whoever it was, talking about get used to not owning it. Are you, are you kidding me? Are you, dude, go, get used to it. How about you get used to dropping your game prices half off your quadruple A title? What was that nonsense that I heard before? It's not a triple A, it's a, uh, something, like, something like that, if I said that right. No. And then Skull and Bones come out, or wherever that pirate game come out, and it was terrible. No, 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 no. No, no. Imagine paying digital for that game, and probably some people did, and that's the product you get. No. No, no, no. Physical media all the way. I'm sorry. I had to. No, that's something I'm passionate about. I will never get rid of physical media. Heck, let's go back to VH. Well, <laughs> you want to do all that. But, you know, no, Blu-rays and physical copies. I'm with that all the way. Enough experience where people. 
Yeah, get used and to, to being like, able to. I can't use believe that person said that. Services. Get used to not owning, pay seventy dollars to not own. Someday we make it to the point where cloud-enabled devices will provide a good enough experience where people are willing to transition over to cloud-based gaming uh, on a more full-time basis. So when that happens, when you don't have the upfront need of a device. Then you might see more and more games dropping the premium up front in order to really expand the appeal of the game. Nope. And if I'm being a little dramatic over it, oh well, I am so serious. I am so serious. I would never get used to that. Ever. Buying downloadable content and stuff is fine, but it better be, you know, to an extent it's fine. Let me make that clear. But getting rid of my physical media, something that I actually own, it's mine. No, it's crazy. It's like, how would they feel? It's like we pay seventy dollars, and after a couple of years, give me my seventy dollars back. Like, does that make sense? No. And the company's gonna look at me like I'm crazy. What do you think I'm doing when you tell me to get used to the other side? No. What do you think? No. Have the like, and that's the what I'm saying. These companies need to respect the fans, and you then you'll get the money. It's like it's it's crazy. Get used to it. But if I ask you to give me my money back, then. You're going to look at me like I'm crazy. You're going to look at me cross-eyed. There, no, no, no. I, 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 it's, all you got to do is just flip the script. That's all you got to do is flip the script. Cloud gaming. I have no issue with cloud gaming. When you tell, it can be two things. Physical media and cloud, you know, all that cloud. It's just a way for companies to be more lazy as they get more money. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the ones who don't want you to have, don't want you to own stuff. They want to find every way to be extra lazy. No, bro. Like, make that physical copy that I pay $70. $70 for. Uh-uh. I ain't trying to hear about your excuses as you're sitting in your supercar. And it's not, I'm not hating on the what you're getting, but don't disrespect me either. That's the biggest issue. Anyway, I can go on. I'm not going to stop. Dang, this video went longer than I wanted to. Let me know in the comments what you feel about it. And, yeah, shout out to this channel for this conversation. Oh, yeah, get rid of physical media.